I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known. Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to have two parts in this video. The first part, I'm going to share with you another product that I use that is organic to help uh, combat infestations of cabbage worms. And I'm also going to share an idea that I thought was pretty cool. It just came to me to try something different so that I won't be straining my back or having to ask my son or other people to come over to move my soursop trees inside the house because they can't take a temperature below 40 degrees. And in the next couple of days, it's going to be around 45 degrees at night. Well, let's just get started, okay? All right. Okay, guys, I want to show you something. As you can see here, I pulled the plug on this elevated raised garden bed because when this goes all the way up, it's waterlogged. And you can see, I'm going to pull this back. You can see the water at the top of the surface. Let me splash it so you can see. That's too much water. Thank goodness we've been getting a lot of rain. So I have a five-gallon bucket here, and I'm draining this water and putting it as far as I can go. And I'm going to drain all of the elevated raised garden beds. This one, that one over there, and then this one right behind me. But I want you to see how it has exploded with growth. It's early. It's about 7.20 in the morning. And, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to put the nets back on because it will just stifle their growth. And it's past the... Uh, length of the hoops i could get larger ones but i don't need to do that because it showed up on my timeline on facebook this morning that i took the covers the insect netting covers off on this date last year so i'm going to remove all the clips let these dry out and then store them in my grow room now i want you guys to know something you see all that good water I'm going to put a top on it, and I will use it to water my garden. It's just like compost tea, because all of the fermented country um, that's been used in this soil for years, because remember, when I filled these boxes up, all I did was shovel the soil from the garden bed low to the ground that it was resting on. So there's a lot of water in here, and there's as well as a lot of good nutrients. So I'm going to save those gallons, and it'll probably be about 10 or 15 gallons when I get done. Three, five-gallon buckets. I'll put a top on them, and I'll save that to water my plants when it's not raining, just like compost tea. Okay? And that's just water. And when I set these up, I made sure that I put those drainage holes on the outside of the aisle. Let's walk over here so I can show you. Here's the second one. I put that drainage hole right there. So I'm gonna have to move this bucket and slide it over. Uh oh, uh oh, I didn't mean to. <laughs> I did, didn't mean to open it. I'm gonna go get another bucket, push that blue bucket out of the way because this is good soil that I'm going to use for another container and uh, yeah then I'll have compost tea out of all three containers and so I was just want to share with you how vigorous the seedlings are growing now that it's got a lot of rain and I got to just examine them and make sure I don't have any uh, worms those cabbage moths that lay their eggs on the underside of the leaves I saw in the video, somebody was spraying on the top. You've got to spray on the other underside 
because that's where they would lay the eggs. But I'm going to harvest some of these probably on the weekend. And I'll be harvesting from the outside of the plant, never cutting off in the middle. And that will allow them to keep growing. Okay? But they look great. And you can see all the little pieces of garlic cloves I put in here are shooting up. As well as the society garlic right there. And look over here. This is taller than the hoop. So now is the time to let the insect netting go. And now I'm gonna show you right here what I'll be using every few days. This is BT, it's a biological insecticide that is OMRI listed, meaning that it is great for organic gardening. And I'm going to be using this every few days now that the temperature is in the 80s and we're supposed to get two days when the temperature is going to be uh in the uh middle 40s at night so even though this has a lot of water on the plants we're not expecting any more rain today so i'm gonna go and spray all of my grow boxes like these and the elevated garden beds like these and remove the netting and I'll just alternate between using the BT and with water, of course, one tablespoon in a gallon of water. And then I'll be using, the next time I spray my plants, I will be using neem oil with a drop or two of dish soap. So look at all that water still coming out, guys. And it's gonna be about a bucket. So now I'm gonna go over here and show you how you don't see that standing water anymore. Can't splash it, right? So I'm just gonna let it take its time and drip out. And then I'm gonna go get two more buckets and put one on that end over there. And then I'm gonna put the other one on at the end of this garden bed here. And you can see that top right there. I have a lot of them behind the greenhouse. I will put tops on the water in case we do get a, a surprise shower or two. Um, I don't want this to be diluted. I'm going to put this straight on my plants, okay? And I want to show you this. How vigorously these greens have grown, these mustard greens. Okay, this one, I got over five gallons. So I'm just letting this slowly drain. I'm trying to catch all that. I wish I could catch you right here. There's a design in the flaw in this. Let me see if I can turn it where I can get most of the water. Yeah, that's better. And then I'll put this top on here and let's go check the other one. Wow, it's filling up fast. I may have to get another bucket. Now I want you guys to know, you can leave the dispenser out, open, so it can run down on the ground. But I prefer uh, this time of year to capture the water and those nutrients and put it back into the grow boxes. Okay, I'm not going to prolong and showing you every drop of water that comes out. I just wanted to give you another feature why I like these Keter Urban Extra Large elevated raised garden beds and when i walk around here and weed out i don't have to bend over as a senior citizen it's very easy for me to just pick up the, the you know weeds and i don't have to be doing a lot of bending and stooping okay all right so this time of year, I'm always rushing to get everything uh, set up for the greenhouse for the winter and get my soursop trees moved inside. And I always have to call my son or somebody over to help me move them. And I, one night I was just thinking, it's got to be a better way for me to be able to wheel those trees in by myself. So I came up with this idea of using a gorilla cart. So let me show you what I did. First thing I did was I... Flip the cart upside down and I drill holes. You can see my drill right here, cordless drill, and I just drill some holes in it for drainage, right? And then I decided I need bigger holes here 
and I don't have a bit that big. So what I did was heated up a knife, an old knife. Let me show you. You see it's smoking? And then I just went inside the holes and just made them a little bigger. Okay, and make sure you use an old knife because you're not going to be able to use it anymore. Okay, so I got all the drainage holes that I want. I'm just going to make this one a little bit bigger since I have the knife is warm or hot. <laughs> and I'm going to go in here, make this one bigger, and this one a little bigger. Woo! Hot, hot, hot. So those are nice size. Now, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to show you what else I It's a reservoir. And I learned from my rain barrels that had this reservoir here. If you don't have the drainage holes in it, it can be a breeding place for uh, mosquitoes and bugs, insects. So I put some holes with the, with the cordless drill right in here. And I'm just going to take my heated iron, my knife here, and um, just reinforce them make sure that, that that they're draining very well. You can see that smoke. Be careful when you're doing this, ladies. If you're somebody like me that doesn't have a lot of experience, <coughs> it gets smoke out the way. I have a lot of experience working with tools and things like this. So now I got adequate drainage. Okay? All right. Okay, guys, I'm out in the greenhouse, and you can see the holes better because, you know, we're outside and... You know, uh, it's getting light outside, so you can see these holes much better. Let me see. These drainage holes. So, I'm pleased. Now, I know I can't get this gorilla cart down that aisle because it's not wide enough. I can go around this side, but I have things I'm keeping out of the rain. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag one of those sour sop trees down here, place it here, and then I already checked it out, but I'm going to demonstrate it for you. I can maneuver the cart within this narrow pathway. It's going to be a sharp turn here. And then I'll move the bricks back and get it up on the patio and then get it in the house. Okay, I'll be back after I drag the tree okay. down. So I took the tree and I drug it along the top of the cement bed because it's too wide for the pathway. And now I have it on my brick floor at the entrance of the greenhouse. I decided to do the large one or the tallest one first because if I can maneuver that one in the house, I know I can get the shorter one. And then I started thinking, okay, Lady Cheryl, you got to work smart and not hard. Why put it in here? and then try to get in that narrow walkway, I'm gonna drag that tree out right here and start potting it up here. And by the way, this can hold five cubic feet. And if you didn't know, you can prune the roots of your trees when they are growing in a container and keep them in the same container for years. Just don't take more than a third of the roots off. But I don't think I'm gonna need to prune anything I'm gonna come back after I get the tree out of the pot. I'm gonna lay it on its side, put some soil potty mix down here, put that tree in, backfill it, bam. I got the Gorilla Cart where I need it on the patio so it'd be very easy for me to move it in the house. I went in the grow room and I got my blue tarp. I drug the sour sap tree out of the greenhouse and I'm gonna lay it on its side pull it out but before I do that I'm gonna put one bag of potty mix new potty mix in the gorilla cart and you have to use potty mix guys you can buy it bagged up or you can make your own but you got to have some perlite peat moss or vermiculite in that mixture to uh, allow it to adequately drain okay so I'm gonna put the soil in pull the tree out of that pot while it's leaning on its side. As you can see here, let me go closer, this tree could have stayed in this pot a couple more years. The root ball came out perfectly intact. They have little small feeder roots similar to citrus trees. There are only a few roots right here at the bottom. And I'm just going to break them off because I know I can trim the 
roots. But in this case, I don't have to. I'm just going to set this big ball right down in the Gorilla cart. I'm very pleased. Almost the whole ball stayed intact. A little bit came off on this side, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to shake it down a little bit. And try to position it where it's standing as straight as I can get it. Yeah, I'm happy. Now I'm going to put all of this soil over there. I'm out of breath because it was heavy. I'm going to put all that over here and here. And then I'll fill the rest up with homemade compost. Guys, when I tell you I'm happy, I am so happy. I got it done. And, uh, wow. This just came to me. I didn't see it anywhere. I wasn't inspired by anybody. I just said, why don't you try to take it and put it inside of a little cart. Gorilla cart. Look at that. Standing up real good. I watered it in. I will uh, take a rest. Take a little break. Don't overwork yourself when you're a senior citizen. And then I'll do another one. And I'll come back and just show you both of them when I put them in. In My youngest house. son, Andre, is here giving me a hand with securing the plastic on the frame of the greenhouse on that side. I need some help. I couldn't do that by myself. He's doing a good job, and I sure appreciate it. And you can see missing right there is that other solid sump tree. Got it back from the uh, greenhouse and moved it right here. So we can get this other cart set up right there. Then we'll be finished. Well, at least I'll be finished. You need clips? Here they are. So that side actually has two panels. Uh, that'll keep some of the wind off of the pepper plants. And over here, when I have the windows up, I'm going to run a row of six milliliter plastic on, on these openings. Because these Velcro, I'm going to go around this side. I'm going to show you. These Velcro windows, screens, just have a little piece of Velcro down here. And that's it. And one in the middle. And it doesn't keep them solid when it comes in. Which you need a little wind to come in. That's why they started making them with these little grommets right here to let a little air in so that it would lower the humidity. That's the problem I had it was getting stuck. That's because these aren't real bits. Okay, everybody, so my son just left and we got that other tree in. I'm so glad he came because um, it was so heavy. But, uh, Maddie? Hi! <laughs> <laughs> this is my oldest son's baby daughter. She's visiting me today. And the, you can see the wind is really uh, high. So I have my mask on because I have allergies. You have allergies too, buddy? I'm allergic to some She's allergic to avocados and pineapples. Anyway, guys, this is a wonderful idea. And I hope it inspires some of you um that want to put a fruit tree a tropical tree and grow it in a climate that you know you usually wouldn't grow it in and so that you could bring it in and out of the house well, it's been a long day and i'm exhausted and i'm just so happy that this project is completed if you look to the right of the screen you will see the picture of the soursop trees that i've been growing from seeds for about five years i think in this picture they were probably two years old i hope i share something that you can use remember Check me out on Monday nights and check out my natural skin and hair care line at LadyCherylsProducts.com. Bye now. Do your own, eat your own. It's not all you can do with. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. See you real soon.